The content of tonight's program addresses an unusual topic which may be considered controversial and explicit. Parental discretion is advised. These jurors, and you at home, will weigh the evidence presented to you in a dramatic reenactment of an actual court trial. Judge Paul Howard presiding. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? That cop tried to kill me! You'll retire and begin your deliberations. And decide for yourself whether you think the defendant is guilty or innocent. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Guilty or Innocent, the show where good judgment pays. And now, here's our jury moderator, John Sheeran. Hello and welcome to Guilty or Innocent. I'm John Sheeran, your jury moderator. These jurors, and those of you at home, will weigh the evidence presented in a dramatization of an actual court case. Those of our jurors whose verdict matches the original verdict in the case will share $5,000 and earn the right to continue on our program for up to five consecutive shows. If the verdict is unanimous and correct, they will share $10,000. Now, before we see the dramatization, a few words from our host, the eminent trial attorney, Mr. Melvin Belli. You know, we've got a macabre one for you today. Homicide is a killing of one person by another. It's not murder if you're defending yourself, however. But how about defending yourself from starvation? Is that viewed as imminent danger in the eyes of the court? Four men find themselves adrift in a lifeboat without food or water. Uncertain when or even if they'll ever be rescued as we sit in the comfort of our homes. It's hard to visualize the strategy that these men were plotting and planning. But now it's time for the jury contestants, as well as you viewers at home, while I finish my chicken, to decide for yourself whether you think the defendant is guilty or innocent. Today's case on Guilty or Innocent, Seafood Special. As we enter the courtroom, the defendant, Patrick Alahanti, has been charged with murder in the first degree. After 18 days adrift in a small lifeboat with little water and no food, the defendant slashed the throat of the decedent in order for the remaining three to survive off his flesh. Phew! You died! Hey, Now then, Brad, will you relate for the court the events leading to your ordeal? We left, <clears throat> we left the Port of Los Angeles uh, in a 42-foot sloop bound for Tahiti uh, with a stopover for supplies in Honolulu. Yes. Would you uh, identify the parties in this photograph, please? Yeah, it's, it's me, Patrick Alahante, Mark Meher, and... Uh, Doug Severson. Douglas Severson, the decedent. You said that the trip had been planned for some time. You mentioned only three names, however. Yours, Mark Mahern's, and the defendant's, Patrick Alahanti. Yeah, well, the three of us worked at the same accounting firm. So how did Douglas Severson then happen to be on the voyage with you? He just hung around the marina bumming free rides. And we needed an extra hand. He had, he had a great, great sense of humor. <laughs> Always made us laugh. He, uh, kind of naive, you know, a kid. Please, Please go on. Just a kid. You know. Well, anyway, 
three days out of the islands, we started running into one storm after another. It was really weird. Uh, I remember being on the bilge pump at one point, six hours, solid. And then this, this wave, a, a solid a topless wall of water just fell right on us. The sloop didn't have a chance. It pulled us right under. <laughs> to this day, I don't know how the hell we, uh, any of us got out of it. All four of you survived? Yes. And then what happened? Well, in, uh... After that, we made it to the sloop's dinghy. You're doing fine, Brad. See, Brad, uh... Dougie was... He was hurt pretty bad. He's, his back was all broke. He was... He, he was... Couldn't feel anything below his waist. And he was, must have been gored pretty bad because he was, he was bleeding a lot. And, uh, he... He didn't even know it. He didn't. We, uh, we managed to catch some rainwater for the first few days and a little, a green sea turtle, but then nothing. Just ocean and that sun just beating down on us. How long did that continue? Fifteen days. With nothing to eat, nothing to drink. So, that's when Pat, that's when Pat suggested we draw lots. Draw lots? Uh, for what purpose? To, to determine who would die. Uh, go on. See, he said we didn't have a chance out there. But this way, Three of us would have a chance if we, if we, if we lived off the other one. Fed from their flesh. I said no. That was way too much. I said... So, Pat, Pat and Mark sort of stayed with each other for the rest of the day and uh, whispering together. I, Quietly, something. I don't know. So then, what happened the following day? Dougie was. Dougie could barely keep his eyes open. He couldn't. And I saw Pat. Not to Mark. And then Mark, he grabbed me. And then Pat pulled out a rigging knife. I knew what you, I knew what he was going to do. I, I screamed at him. I, I thought him he was going to be murdered. Yes? And, and I saw Pat, and, and I put it to Dougie's throat, then he whispered something. I don't know, I couldn't hear him, he was crying. And then, and then the next thing, I just blood everything. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Pat. I'm sorry, Pat. Oh, God. Oh, God. You're a witness. I won't keep you much longer, Mr. Zedlin. It was pretty rough out there, wasn't it? And all of you were thirsty and hungry? Did you eat with the others, Mr. Zetlin? I didn't want to. There was nothing out there. Nobody was around. I was nothing Did out there. Did you eat with the others? I did. I, there was nothing. 
There was nothing I could do. There was nothing I could do. We were starving. We've been out Mr. for three Zeppelin. weeks. Mr. Zeppelin. We were starving. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Your Mr. Honor, God, I Zeppelin. must protest. Witnesses order. obviously must order. be destroyed. I have order in this court. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Alejante, what induced you to kill Douglas Severson? I, I, I could see, I could see that there was no question that we were all going to die if we didn't get something to eat. Mm -hmm. And then you offered to draw lots to determine who would die, isn't that correct? Yes, as things stood, there was no question that we were all going to die. You could have lost. Dying of hunger was a sure thing if we didn't draw. Then what you did out in the dinghy was done to save all their lives, is that correct? We couldn't have survived another day. We, we had to do something. It was our only chance. We were all dying. Thank you, Patrick. Your witness. You say everyone was uh, sure to die if uh, you didn't get something to eat. That uh, you had no choice. That's right. Well, what choice did Dougie Severson have? I mean, what if the dinghy had been spotted the very next day? But well, we weren't. I mean, what if you had been spotted five minutes after cutting the boy's throat? Objection, Your Honor. Besides unnecessarily provoking the witness, counsel is trying to suggest that the defendant should have been able to look into the future. Uh, Your Honor, by murdering Doug Severson, the defendant showed that he could look into the future. Sustained. He... Sustained. Thank you, Your Honor. I think we'll be busy enough here with the facts, Mr. Kincaid. Yes, Your Honor. There was uh, a chance that you would have been picked up. I mean, it was a possibility. Isn't that right? I suppose so. No further questions. The defendant would have had us believe he acted in self-defense against the beast of hunger. But the real beast was within Patrick Alejante's soul, and its name is cowardice. Killing a helpless boy to eat his flesh is the act of a coward, concerned only with extending his own miserable life, as well as the epitome of revulsion. Now, it's time for you to punish him for this grisly act and return a verdict of guilty as charged. When Patrick Alahanty acted, he was out of necessity. The essence of a crime is the intent. And Patrick Alahanty's intent was clearly to preserve the lives of those who still had some chance of survival. The fact that Mark Maher died only hours after they were rescued demonstrates how close to death they all had been. The prosecution star witness is alive today because of that courage. Killing is not murder if it is done to save your own life. Now, don't condemn that life now by returning the wrong verdict. Return a verdict of not guilty. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, before you retire to the jury room, I must assess you of the following. The person who kills when he feels in imminent danger of great bodily harm or death is not guilty of murder. If you feel that this was the case here, you must find for the defendant. If, however, there was a chance of survival without killing, then the defendant has indeed committed murder, and you must return a verdict of guilty.